Blessed day everyone! Welcome to my channel, Math with Mrs. O. I'm Ophelia Orate, principal owner of a school, a math teacher, and an author of 21 books. I taught in Philippine Science High School for 18 years and was the head of the math department or math unit for a time. You can use this review for your Philippine Science High School entrance exam, for your Ateneo, La Salle, or any science or non-science high school entrance exam for grade 7. I made sure that the math questions here are of the level of Philippine Science High School. Please don't forget to press the bell button and subscribe. Thank you! This is Philippine Science High School Review Part 4 Problem number 1 which property of whole numbers justifies the algebraic expression parenthesis 2 plus 5 parenthesis plus 7 equals 7 plus 2 plus 5? Now, the correct answer is not associative but commutative. Many students make a mistake here. Remember, students, commutative property is telling us that the order of the addends doesn't affect the sum. In this case, the 2 plus 5 here, which is in the first position, just went to the second position. And the second position, 7, went to the first position. So there was just a change in the order. Whereas, associative, many students in my review center make a mistake. They always answer associative. It is wrong. Remember, associative property states that for example, 2 plus 5 plus 7 is equal to 7 plus 2 parenthesis plus 5. You see, the elements inside the group were changed. That is associative property. Remember that. Don't forget. But here... The 2 plus 5 is still 2 plus 5 on the other side. So there was only a change in the order. Now, problem number 2. A father is 3 times as old as his son. If M is the age of the father, which of the following represent the son's age 6 years ago? So the father is N. So father, which is N, is... Three times as old as his son. So this is three times the son. There. Now, N is the age of the father. So now, what represent the age of the son six years ago? So if you want to get the age of the sons, then the son will just be N over three. But there is a phrase here, six years ago. So therefore, you get the age of the son now, minus 6 will be the age of the son 6 years ago. So the final answer here is letter E. What if the problem will ask for the age of the son 6 years from now? So what you will do is, n over 3, this is the age of the son now, plus 6, that will be the age of the son 6 years from now. Remember that. So if, this six, if it is, let's say, 10 years ago, n over 3 minus 10. 10 years from now, n over 3 plus 10. Problem number three. Mrs. Cruz inherited 40% of the estate of her late husband. The rest of the property was equally divided among their three children. If the youngest child received 100,000 pesos worth, how much did Mrs. Cruz receive? Okay, let's start. Mrs. Cruz inherited 40%. So the rest, the rest will be 
60%. Remember that 40% went to Mrs. Cruz, rest, 100% minus 40%, which is 60%. That will be the rest. Now, the rest of the property was equally divided among their three children. You have children one, child one, child two, child three. The youngest child received 100,000. So if the youngest child here received 100,000, the second child also received 100,000. How did I know that? There, equally, equally divided. So it's 100,000 each. How much did Mrs. Cruz receive? If this is 60%, you divide it by three because there are three children. So one child received 20%, isn't it? So 100,000 is 20%. How much did Mrs. Cruz inherit? How many, how, how many percent? 40%. If for every 20%, you get 100,000, so 40% is 20% plus 20%, so this will be 200,000. So Mrs. Cruz received 200,000, so the answer is letter B. Did you get that? Again, 60% divided by three children, so each child received 20%. Mrs. Cruz received 40%, that is, there are two 20%. For every 20%, you get 100,000. So 100,000 times two is 200,000. Next, problem number four. Now, there are two ways to approach the problem. Solution one is this. In solution one, you can get the differences. Like this is 1, 4, 9, 16, blank. Get the difference here. This is plus 3. Oh, what do you add to get 9? You get plus 5. What do you add to get 16? You get plus 7. What do you think is the next one? You get 3, 5, 7. 3 plus 2, 5 plus 2, 7 plus 2 is 9. Isn't it? Now, you add this. 16 plus 9, you get 25. So the final answer is 25. Again, 1 plus 3 gives you 4. 4 plus 5 gives you 9. 9 plus 7 is 16. 16 plus 9 is 25. I can give you another solution. You know, in patterns like this, there are different ways on how you can come up with the answer. Other solution is this. Take a look at 1, 4, 9, 16, blank. What kind of numbers are they? They are squares. 1 is the square of 1. 4 is the square of 2 or 2 times 2. 9 is the square of 3 or 3 times 3. 16 is the square of 4 or 4 times 4. So this is what? 5 square. And 5 square is 25. You still get the same answer, 25. Now let's move on to the next problem. Problem number 5. Oh, another patterns, number patterns. So we get 1, 4, 13, 40, blank. The best way here is for you to get the differences. There, get the differences. So what do you add to 4 to get, what do you add to 1 to get 4? 3. 4 plus blank gives you 13, or 13 minus 4 is 9. 40 minus 13 is 27. What do you see here? For you to get the next number here. How do you get 9 from 3? And how do you get 27 from 3? You multiply by 3. So 3 times 3 gives you 9. 9 times 3 gives you 27. 27 times 3 is 81. So... Add 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 plus 9 is 13, 13 plus 27 is 40, 40 plus 81. So 40 plus 81, that is 121. So the correct answer is 121. 
Next problem, problem number 6. If A is to a 1, what is Z? These are just the position of the letters in the alphabet. English alphabet, to be specific. Letter A is the first letter of the English alphabet. And Z is the 26th letter of the English alphabet. So our answer is letter D. We're done! So, before we leave, don't forget to subscribe again. Press the subscribe and the bell button. And don't forget to add kindness, subtract judgment, multiply understanding equals Mrs. O's good life equation. Thank you.